Chapter 8, Lesson 1, Essential Question. How do you divide a whole number by a fraction and divide a fraction by a whole number? Investigate. Mia walks a two-mile fitness trail. She stops to exercise every one-fifth mile. How many times does Mia stop to exercise? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. Also see what you are being asked to do. What clue words tell you what operation we are working with? You should have underlined how many times does Mia stop to exercise, circled two miles because that's the total amount, and then one-fifth because that's how often she stops. And then in blue, I underline stops every because we're taking a total and then we're breaking it into smaller pieces. So those keywords tell us that we are working with division. We're taking a whole number or a large amount, a larger amount, and breaking it into smaller pieces. So the first step that we need to do is draw a number line from 0 to 2, because 2, we're doing 2 miles. And then divide the number into fifths, the number line into fifths, because that's how often she's stopping. And then label each fifth of our number line. So here we have a 0 all the way up to 2. And then right in half is going to be 1, and so then from 0 to 1, it needs to be breaking down into fifth miles. So there's one space, two spaces, three space, four space, five. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, and on that fifth line, you would get the whole number. And then another one, two, three, four, five, and on the fifth line, you would be at two. So that's the number line. So the next step is to skip count by fifths from 0 to 2 to find 2 divided by 1 fifth. Okay, so by doing that, they just mean that this is going to be 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, which is 1, but we're just counting fifths, so we're going to go 5 fifths, 6 fifths, 7 fifths, 8 fifths, 9 fifths, 10 fifths. So we know that there are 10 1 fifths in two holes. Now we can use the relationship between multiplication and division to explain and check our solution. So we're recording and checking our quotient. 2 divided by 1 fifth equals, well we came up with 10, and we know this because 10 times 1 fifth equals 2. Because remember, we have to go, so 10 times 1 equals 10, and then our denominator stays the same, so that'd be 10 fifths. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so that's 2, and they check each other. So that means that Mia stopped 10 times. Looking at B. They're going to ask you to use fraction strips, which if you have those available, that's fine. But um, we are in class are going to, again, use the number line because that's something that you always readily have available to you. And it's a strategy that you can use at any time, including on assessments. Okay, so Roger has two yards of string. He cut the string into pieces that are one-third of a yard long. How many pieces of string does Roger have? So here it says to model two using two whole fraction strips. And you can see in the picture right here, they have one hole and then another hole. Well, I on my number line, I have one, two holes. The next step, they say, is to place enough one-third strips to fit exactly under the two holes. So basically, we're going to just divide this into one-third pieces. Now, because this one-third is based on a one hole, we can, again, just between 0 and 1, we're going to divide that into three pieces. Okay, so it's not quite in the middle, so 1, 2, and then the third line is on the hole, and then another 1, 2, and the third line's on the hole. Now, I know that's not super even, but I do have one, two, three pieces between zero and one, and one, two, three pieces between one and two. And that's what they're looking for. We wanted one-third pieces. 
So how many one-third pieces did we fit here? Well, there's one, two, three spaces here, and then another one, two, three. So that means that there are six one-third pieces. And then if you skip count again, there's one-third, two-third, three-third, four-third, five-third, six-third. And then we're going to check it. So one, two divided by one-third equals six. And to check our quotient, we know that that can be true because six times one-third equals two. Because again, you just multiply six times one, the whole number times the numerator, we keep the same denominator, and that reduces down to two. So how many pieces of string did Roger end up with? He had six pieces of string. Looking at the draw conclusions, now this is where they're trying to get you to think deeper about this and understand why what you're doing works, okay? So when you divide a whole number by a fraction, how does the quotient, remember that's the answer, compare to the dividend? That is the number that you're dividing, okay? So they're asking how does the quotient right here in 2 divided by 1 third equals 6, the quotient is 6 um, compared to the 2. How do they compare? I'd like you to finish the sentence. My quotient is blank, then my dividend. What would be the best word to fin fill in that sentence? You should use the word greater than my dividend. So now looking at number two. Explain how knowing the number of fifths in one hole could help you find the number of fifths in two holes. Think about our previous problem when we were dividing two by one fifth. We kind of looked at what was in one before moving on to the second hole. So how can knowing how many fractions or pieces or parts there are in one hole help you with finding that in two. I'd like you to think about this sentence and fill in the missing word. If I know the number of parts in one hole, I can blank that number to find the parts in two. What word would best fill in that sentence? You should have used the word multiply. Because remember, we found it in one. If there's five fifths in one, in two, there would be ten fifths. So now, let's think about how or describe how you would find four divided by one fifth based on what we've uh, talked about here. Okay, how would, what's the first thing that you would do? Do you know the number of parts in a whole? Can you, what can you multiply? Think it through. All right, so now that you've thought about it, I've given you a sentence to kind of fill in. Um, excuse some of the bad handwriting. It says, since there are five fifths in one, I can blank five times blank to find the total number of fifths. So what word and what number are we going to fill in? And then I want you to fill in right here because this is your justification of why you can do what you are doing. You should have used the word multiply and then you could have multiplied four because if we know there's five fifths in one, then in four holes it's just four times five. So we're going five times four and what does that equal? That equals 20. So we know that 4 divided by 1 fifth is also 20. Moving on to the make connections. This example again is also showing fraction strips which you can look at right here but I'm also going to show it on a number line because again a number line is a strategy that you can use at any time as long as you have paper and a pencil. So. Um, Kalia shares half of a package of clay equally among herself and each of two friends. What fraction of the whole package of clay will each friend get? So first, we're being asked to find what fraction of the whole package will each friend get. And so she starts with a half of a package 
and then herself and two. So that's going to be three people. So I'm actually going to write a big three there so that I don't forget to count uh, Kalia herself. So their first step is to place a half a strip under the whole strip um, to show that we're only using a half a package of clay. So that's this blue piece. Right here on my number line, I just did zero to one, so that's showing my whole piece, and then I divided it in half so that I can have my half a piece right here. And then they say find three fraction strips all with the same denominator that would fit exactly under the two strips. So using the fraction strips, it's kind of a guessing game. But on our number line here, I'm going to divide my half into three. So again, they're not quite in the middle. So there's three, but because they want to know about the whole, I'm going to have to break the other side into three as well. So now, which pieces do you think, if you had fraction strips, would those be that they all have the same bottom? Okay, well, let's count how many pieces of a whole are there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six. So each of these blue ones are technically one-sixth of a whole. So right here we can see that each piece is oh, one-sixth of a whole. And then we're going to record that. So one-half divided by three is going to be one-sixth because... because one-sixth times three equals one-half. And again, we can even double check that. We times our whole number times our numerator, that is three-six, three, and then our denominator stays the same, that's three-six, that reduces to one-half, that's the same thing. So each friend actually gets one-sixth of the whole package. Okay, go ahead and press pause while you're working on the share and show. Um, these first few, they give you your visuals, your fraction strips, or your number line, and they give you some hints to get you going. Um, down here, because your share and show is a full page, um, I would suggest you try to use the number line because that's the strategy that you're able to use anytime. You're not always going to have the fraction strips. So um, draw a number line and um, press pause while you work. When you come back, I will be showing you the number lines for numbers five and six, but I'll just show you the answers for the rest of them. Okay, on number one, three divided by one third. Based on this picture, we can count up how many thirds, and it is nine, there are nine thirds because nine times one, three, one third equals three. On number two, um, it's three divided by one sixth. So what should each what should each hole be divided into? Each tick mark, sixes. It should because we're working with sixes. And how many total for three holes? There, count them all up, and you get eighteen. And we can double check that. Eighteen times one sixth equals three. Eighteen over six reduces to three. Number three. We're taking a fraction and dividing it into even smaller pieces. So one fourth divided by two. So we have one fourth here divided by two. They what size pieces did they become? They became one eighths. And if you had your fraction strips, you could like put eight eighths under there, and that would equal to the whole. And we can still check that because one eighth times two ends up being two eighths, which reduces to one fourth. All right, okay, so now looking at number five and six, I will draw the number lines for them, and then I will show you the answers for the rest of them. Okay, on number five, I have my three holes, and I need to divide them into four pieces, because it's one-fourth. There, I divided it into four pieces. Now, how many pieces are there in the, all three of them? There are 12. Number six is one-fifth divided by two. So I have it between zero and one divided into five pieces. Now each one-fifth piece needs divided into two. If I count up all those pieces, I will find that each of these pieces that I just broke into are going to be one-tenth size pieces. I will now give you all the other answers.